Hello, thank you for joining us for this week's virtual Earth Week how-to session. I'm Julia Robson, conservation biologist for Waukesha County Parks, and this morning we're going to be learning how to identify backyard birds and how you can contribute to bird conservation from your own home. One of the first things you can do as a fledgling bird watcher is get yourself a good pair of binoculars and a really handy field guide. When you're looking for your first pair of binoculars, you want to pick something that fits your face well, that aren't too heavy, that are nice and lightweight around your neck, and that have the right magnification. Most people with their first pair of binoculars look for something that's 8 by 42 in power. Now when it comes to a field guide, there's a lot of options. Great field guides for beginners, and then maybe field guides for when you're working your way up into more advanced levels of birding. As a beginning birder looking at birds in your backyard, a great resource is the Birds of Wisconsin Field Guide. It separates birds by color and is really easy to look through and look for some of your neighbors in the backyard. So in addition to the handy field guide that you might have picked up like the Birds of Wisconsin, there's also a lot of really easy to use free applications that you can download and use on your computer or your iPhone. One of those apps that helps you to identify birds that you might be seeing in your backyard is called the Merlin app through the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Let's just show you how simple this is. It's pretty awesome. So say you're sitting at your coffee table, having your morning cup of joe, and you're watching your bird feeder, and you see a bird come in. You want to know what it is. Start bird ID. The first thing the app asks you is where you are. Well, let's say we're an eagle. It asks you the date that you're seeing the bird. Also, what's the general size of the bird? Well, it's about the size of a, a robin. Next, what are the main colors? Hmm, well, it's a little bit brown and it's kind of red. Was the bird eating at the feeder? Yes, it was. Now it's gonna generate a possible list of birds that you might be seeing in your backyard at that time. And from that, we can select what we might be seeing in the backyard. Ah, you know what it was? it was a cardinal. How awesome is that? And this is even cooler. You can then select the sounds and listen to the calls of that bird. I'm sure you've heard of that. That's a sure sign of spring right there. That was our bird. Thank you Merlin app. So once you have your pair of binoculars and your field guide with you, you're set to go outside and start identifying birds in your backyard or your local park. We're here outside Retzer Nature Center watching the, the bird feeder here that is stocked up with sunflower seeds. So we should get some pretty common backyard visitors to, to the feeder here that we'll identify for you. So once you have your binoculars and your field guide, you're ready to head out into your backyard or your local parks to start identifying common birds. It's actually a lot simpler than you might think. There's a couple easy ways to identify what type of bird you might be looking at. And one of the first things that we look for when we see a bird is what are some of its distinguishing features. For example, what color is the bird? Does the bird have any major streaking or what we call wing bars on it? Also, does it have a really big heavy bill or a little short, short stubby beak or bill? For example, sparrows, like the song sparrow that we're seeing feeding on the seeds on the ground right now, are extremely small, little brown birds typically, with a lot of streaking on the body, as you can see on the song sparrow here. The song sparrow also has a very distinguishing dark spot on the front of its chest or breast. The morning dove is also another common backyard bird. They may even nest in your backyard and raise their young. You're likely to see them, but also hear them calling. They have a very unique call. It's kind of soothing and relaxing. It goes, hoo la hoo, hoo, hoo. We also take note of the general size and shape of a bird. Some birds are very, very small, like sparrows, warblers, juncos. Others are a bit larger bodied with larger chests, like robins or morning doves. And then you go larger in scale. You get up to the size of crows, um, woodpeckers, raptors like hawks, and ducks. So knowing the general size of a bird will help you distinguish what species it might actually be. The northern cardinal, which in this case is a male on the left, and the house finch on the right. You can see right away that the cardinal is a larger bird than the finch, and it has a longer tail. 
Right now we're on the tail end of migration for a fairly common backyard bird during our winter season called the dark-eyed junco. The dark-eyed junco is a slaty gray little bird with a pink bill that you often see foraging on the ground. They actually come and spend their winter vacation in Wisconsin. So our winters are very mild compared to what they're used to. They actually nest up in the Arctic tundra. The other pointer we have for birding in your backyard is just to master the common. Know what to expect to see in your backyard at your feeder. For example, it's not likely that you're going to see pie-billed grebes or American bitterns, which are obligate wetland bird species, in your backyard at your feeder. So a lot of your guidebooks will help tell you where you're likely to see certain species of birds, and those are the ones you can know to look out for. They're also the species that once you learn them and you see them frequently, you'll know when something different turns up because you familiarize yourself with what we'd like to call our feathered backyard neighbors. Black-capped chickadees are small and compact with a thin, short bill. The black cap and bib contrast with white cheeks and gray back and wings. Blue jays are smaller than crows, but larger than robins. The blue jay is another relatively common backyard bird that may visit your feeder that also has a very recognizable call. They almost say their name. A very aggressive, J, J, J. We have many species of woodpeckers that frequent our backyards. One of the most popular is the red-bellied woodpecker, and that's the one that we have on the feeder to the right of this male northern cardinal. This is a female red-bellied woodpecker. Most of our woodpeckers have some variation of black and white barring on their back and wings. The red-bellied woodpecker, despite its name, doesn't actually display any obvious red coloration on the belly. You'd actually have to get one in your hand and lightly blow on its stomach to even see the rosy color on the belly. In fact, the most obvious red on the red-bellied woodpecker is on the back of the woodpecker's neck and head. On the female, the red doesn't extend all the way to the beak. On the male, it does. So that's how you can tell that we have a female on the feeder with this cardinal versus a male. While squirrels can be pretty entertaining to watch, they can also be pretty disruptful at the bird feeder. So it's always a good idea to get yourself a bird feeder that has some form of predator guard or squirrel prevention in place on it. Unfortunately, we don't have such a structure on the Retzer Nature Center feeder, so the squirrels have a, quite the buffet. If you're wondering how to attract birds to your backyard, it's actually pretty simple as well. Birds really only need three things food, shelter, and water. You can provide a bird bath so that birds have access to water, and then there are plenty of options on what you can feed birds. What we have out right now on our feeder at Retzer Nature Center are black oil sunflower seeds. So seeds are a great source of nutrition and energy for birds, great to stock your feeder with to get some of the classic backyard residents like woodpeckers, chickadees, cardinals, finches. You can also purchase suet to place out in um, a suet feeder next to your seed feeder as well. One of the best things you can do for birds if you have the space and access to it is provide them with native landscaping, planting native plants. There's a lot of great resources that you can look into on advice for what to plant, where to plant it based on the growing conditions available in your backyard. But native plants support all of the birds that we have here in Wisconsin. Once you've mastered the basics of bird identification and you feel that you can confidently identify what you might be seeing in your backyard, you can then take your birding the next step further and submit what species you're seeing in your local parks, in your backyard, to an international database called eBird. Millions of bird observations are submitted by members of the general public, just like you, every year that researchers and bird conservationists can use to help conserve bird habitat and bird populations globally each year.